Welcome again to Manga Mondays, the only manga review show that occasionally gets the opportunity to film two videos back to back, ergo padding it out for a beautiful two weeks. We've got Astra, Lost in Space. This is a manga from Kenta Shinohara, the same guy who created Sket Dance, which I didn't know until I was like already reading it. Um, and it was kind of a thing where, as I got into it, and I started to feel like what the sense of humor of the manga was, I was like, who the fuck wrote this? And then figured that out and it made a lot of sense. Now, I was never a big fan of Sket Dance. Um, it's a Shonen Jump manga, like a comedy gag series, but I don't really enjoy the sense of humor of it, which is a lot of like characters pointing out that someone else has done something ridiculous. It's that very like Tsukomi bokeh style of Japanese comedy where one character does something stupid and then another character yells at them for doing something stupid, which I think has always been a style of comedy that's difficult for people like me from the West to really appreciate. It's such a like Japanese comedy style that I, I don't really understand what's funny about it, you know? Like, usually the joke itself is funny, but the character overreacting to it is kind of not. And it's rare, I think, that a series can do that really well or, like, downplay it enough that it doesn't get obnoxious. But Sket Dance and this manga do it, like, a lot. And, um, you know, Kenta Shinohara is, like, he's kind of been hyped for the fact that he was, like, the assistant to the guy who wrote Gintama, um, and Gintama, of course, is, like, a hugely popular comedy series, but I don't think they're really that similar. They've, they've had, like, crossovers and everything, but, but in any case, um, this manga is quite different because it's not comedy-focused. It's primarily a sci-fi adventure series that just has a strong er undercurrent of comedy, and I would say that the comedy is the weakest element of it, and also that it's too dialogue-heavy, but we'll get to that in a bit. But, you know, it's it's a pretty decent sci-fi adventure. It's about a bunch of kids who are going to something called Planet Camp. Because it's, it's in a universe where, like, faster than light travel is common. People go to other planets all the time. We're in, like, a far-flung future setting. 2063. So I guess not that... I mean, he's he's probably way underestimating how long it'll take for us to be able to freely fly through space. But, um, but it's in 2063. The characters are all going to space camp to like they're basically they're just left on like a planet and they're like here you're on this planet you gotta live for your like forage for yourself you seven kids for like a week or whatever and the adults fuck off and immediately these kids get sucked into some kind of space-time portal that deposits them on the far flung side of the universe and they happen to find an abandoned ship there which they they commandeer and they're trying to find a way to get back to earth like from this way distant part of the of the galaxy um while nobody really knows that they're out there so it's like a high stakes dramatic sci-fi but like it's all presented very very comedically very like low tension you're not like worried that characters are going to die or anything but they are in a tense scenario and and like it, it it can have dramatic moments and like good character beats because it's in such a dramatic scenario while mostly being like a lighthearted comedic space romp but um so yeah these characters are like landing on alien planets learning about them and they have to learn about each other become friends you know deal with each other's hang-ups there's lots of like teen drama in this because the characters are like they're they're very like uh you know shonen teenager characters like they all got kind of one or two note personalities and like interpersonal conflicts there's a lot of characters yelling at each other and stuff like that which i am not a fan of and it's one of the difficulties i had reading this book but, um, you know, the, the idea of it is strong enough of like these characters have to like sort of make do with each other and grow as people so that they'll be able to survive in these extreme conditions. It's a very typical kind of adventure story, but, um, but an effective one. And the artwork is really, it's really solid in the character design sense. These character designs are great. The girls are extremely attractive, especially this girl. She's waifu material. Um, but unfortunately, her personality is just, she's a tsundere, like, she's just really inauthentic and snippy and argues all the time, and she's kind of trying to learn to deal with that as, like, one of the early plot, uh, you know, character arcs in the manga. Um, but, like, while the designs are really solid, I don't think the panel layouts are, like, that strong. I don't think that you often see something that's gonna, like, blow your mind. It's, it's competent. They're, the alien worlds look okay, you know... This, this all works narratively, and it and is cool enough, but, like, you're not going to come to this for the art, except for the cute girls. 
Especially all the fucking adorable lolly girls with fucking cute outfits on, which are what sold me on this manga in the first place. Let me try to find a good picture of some cute girls. Um, okay, like, look, here's, okay, here's Kutier. She's the girl who I showed you earlier and said was waifu. She's super hot. And then she's got this adorable little sister who's also traveling with them, and she's cute. And so you've got, like, you've got a pretty good hot and cute girl quotient going on here in this manga, which is what made me curious about it, as well as the fact that it's, like, kind of a weird space thing and that it, uh had so much dialogue. Like, I'm, I was looking through this, and, like, there's just an average of shit tons of dialogue per page. But this is, unfortunately, the worst thing about this manga, is that it's too fucking wordy. It takes a long time to read a chapter of this, and so much of that is just characters bickering and, like, dumb gags that it just feels like it's taking way too long to get to the point. Like, by the end of this volume, like, they had done a satisfying amount of space exploration, but it had taken so long to read through all of it that I ended up feeling, like, kind of bored a lot of the time. And if this got an anime adaptation, I think it would be, like, grindingly slow. Like, this would probably make up for, like, six episodes, this one volume, just because there's so much fucking dialogue. And, like, unless the anime could really trim that down, which I feel like it wouldn't, because this is a Shonen Jump thing, so, like, I feel like if they adapted this, they'd try to make 50 episodes out of it, and it would just be a crawl, you know? And that's really unfortunate, because I think it could have been, like, a fun space adventure, but there's just too much focus on constant bickering between characters and, and like, you know, these one-note gag personalities that get get old pretty quickly. And while, you know, there is characterization and arcs to all these characters, they're also just, like, the most average teenage anime character arcs that, like, I can't really resonate with because, like, I've seen it a thousand times, you know? So overall, I would say this is, like, an okay manga. Like, this would be a good, like, early foray into sci-fi for, like, a young person. Maybe if, if, if you're, like someone in their teens who's like both really into sci-fi adventure and into like goofy com comedic characters i could see liking this um for me it just kind of felt like i'd rather either have something that's harder sci-fi or harder drama or more goofy and more funny and not quite this kind of middling interaction of those so i probably won't end up reading any more of this but hey if you like these cute girls in space and you're less annoyed by Japanese comedy uh, cliches than I am, maybe you'll have a great time with it. I could easily imagine this getting an anime adaptation at some point, so maybe it'll get talked about more in the future, but we'll find out. And that's it for this episode. I'll see you next week.